All right, let's bring in Majority Leader Steve Scalise. Steve, how are you doing? Good to see you. So, listen, I... I hey, this, Sean, good this, to be with you and Dagan. Thank you so much. This is what confuses me. So, so you have John Kerry out there saying, listen, the cost of renewables is going down, so we need to kneecap uh, uh, natural gas and coal. If that was the case, Steve, wouldn't you think you'd just let the market play out and the consumer's going to buy the cheaper energy source? Yeah, Sean, they don't believe in the markets, and frankly... They don't care that it's the middle class and low income families that are getting kneecapped. And, and think about this. He's saying that the cost is coming down some with wind and solar. That's with hundreds of billions of dollars in taxpayer subsidies. And oil and natural gas, and especially natural gas for electricity, has actually allowed us in, the, in America to bring down carbon emissions. Why would he want to go and kneecap the very source of energy that's allowing America to lead the world in lower emissions? When all the countries that he gets on his private jet and flies around the globe, emitting all kind of carbon, going to in Europe, they're not meeting the Paris Accord agreements. And so you would want to be emulating what America does because we do it cleaner than anywhere in the world. Instead, they want to wreck America's economy with these illegal regulations that are going to get thrown out in the courts. But it's crushing middle class families. And it shows the elitism. They're so out of touch with the real world. They are crushing middle class families with higher costs. And it's not going to achieve. Look, China isn't abiding by any of this. China's the world's polluter, and they're letting China off the hook. Uh, Congressman, though, part of this plan would be forcing utilities to either switch to cleaner fuels like hydrogen or switch to carbon capture systems. And that has been a love child of both the left and the right of Democrats and Republicans. And since 2009, the Energy Department spent uh, $1.1 billion. It was actually, I think, more than that in 11 projects. And out of that, more than a billion in the 11 projects, only two of them are still open. It was a disaster. So the federal government should have just set that money on fire, in essence. But the government is getting ready to spend another two and a half billion. And carbon capture has been something that both conservatives and liberals have have cheered. When will you put a stop to funding things that are unproven? Well, and, and you talked about it. It's it's literally lighting taxpayer dollars on fire. And anybody that doesn't believe it, go Google Solyndra. Go look at what the taxpayers lost. Hundreds of millions of dollars on a boondoggle. Uh, that was John, uh, it was not just John Kerry's brainchild, it was Joe Biden's brainchild when he's vice president. The company went bankrupt in months and they burned through all that taxpayer cash and we never saw anything. Let the market dictate this. I'm an all of the above energy guy. Let's go and use all forms of energy. We need more oil, we need more natural gas, we need more nuclear power. Yes. Uh, but let wind and solar develop, but not with trillions in taxpayer subsidies. It's crushing middle class families and it's making our country less competitive to countries like China, who are literally, they're using coal, they're building a new coal plant every week uh, and eating our lunch economically. Yeah, it's going to drive us back to the Stone Age, Congressman. But let's, let's talk about one of your colleagues, one of your favorite members of the House, New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She doesn't mind that the Green New Deal is going to cost trillions of dollars. Listen to this. The scale and the scope of what we are proposing is massive, uh, but... The scale and the scope of the climate crisis is even bigger. And if we are not proactive about very aggressively and transformationally addressing our infrastructure, our workforce, our preparation for the climate crisis, then the costs of not addressing it are going to be far greater. So, Congressman, one, we're... $32 trillion in debt on a fast track to $52 trillion. She wants to spend trillions more on the Green New Deal. The problem I have is I think so many of her colleagues actually agree with this crazy town concept. Yeah, you know, and by the way, there is no end to the taxpayer money that they will spend to try to go and, and run after this green agenda. I call it a red agenda because all of the products, the solar panels, over 90% made in China. The car batteries, you know, everything's going to be an electric car. They want to get rid of the combustion engine. Uh, all of those car batteries are made in China. They won't even let you mine critical minerals in America. We have a bill, the Lower Energy Costs Act, that would not only allow us to produce more energy in America, it would allow us to bring those critical minerals back here so that China's not doing it. We emit like five, six t less times the amount of carbon to make those kind of things than China does. But the left, they wake up every day and they think America's the problem. 
They love beating up on America. They will never acknowledge that no place in the world does it cleaner or more efficient in the world than the United States. We need to make more things here, not more in China, like these Green New Deal justice warriors want. Uh, Congressman, expect the hysteria and the panic peddling to reach an even higher, more shrill pitch, because findings in recent surveys have found that Democrats and independents are becoming less convinced that climate change is caused mostly by humans. So they're actually, fewer believe it's caused mostly or entirely by humans. And so you're going to hear this kind of panic peddling. Do we have the piece of sound from John Kerry predicting climate change is going to destroy crops and homes? Can we listen to that? It's getting hotter. There are going to be more intensive weather events and it will cost us an awful lot more money. So as that happens, as people see their farms, you know, the crops ripped away or their homes destroyed, you watch the pressure grow. Well, he's going to destroy the farms and, right. and the crops. That's the intent. Yeah, Dagan, they have so much disdain for American workers. You know, look, they, you would think that the, the stalks are just coming out of the ground in Iowa when they're planting their corn because, you know, of climate change. John Kerry, by the way, is probably the largest emitter of carbon of anyone in the world. He's the climate justice warrior. He gets on private jets, flies to Europe, and they all hang out together telling you how you need to change your lifestyle and you need to drive a little Prius and wear your three masks and plug your car into a tree because you don't have real energy in America. You know, he doesn't limit himself. Maybe we could solve some of the problems if we just kept him at home. Living like everybody else has to live by these rules. People are sick and tired of paying 50% more for gas, 30% more for household electricity because these so called fake climate justice warriors are wrecking America's economy. And Xi is benefiting. China's getting all the jobs. Uh, everybody sees what's going on and they realize that's why the polling is turning away from them because people have realized this is lunacy. These are the same people who in the 70s said we're going into an ice age. Then remember acid rain. Every mm -hmm. plan they have involves destruction of the planet and raising your taxes, and none of what they say ever comes true or works, but they want to keep mm -hmm. doing more of it. Yeah, Mr. Leader, I want to get your take on this last uh, issue here, because House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is accusing Biden of ignoring negotiations over the debt ceiling as the Speaker plans to bring a bill to the House floor for a vote next week. Actually, that's you who brings that, uh, that bill to the floor for a vote next yeah. week. How's that going to turn out, Mr. Leader? It's going well on our side. You know, look, our conference has worked really hard to lay out a plan to address the debt ceiling, but also to address Washington's spending problem. Most Americans get that if you've maxed out your credit card, which Joe Biden has done with out of control spending, you don't just give Joe Biden another credit card to max out. You talk about, as you're paying the minimum payment, how to stop getting into this problem. So what we're going to roll forward this week is a plan that actually addresses the debt ceiling and addresses some of the crazy wasteful spending. I mean, why are we paying people billions and billions of dollars a month not to work when every employer is looking for jobs? Why do we have all this COVID money still out there, tens of billions of dollars uh, unspent when COVID is over? The president even said it, yet he still wants to spend tens of billions more. People are tired of seeing Washington waste money when inflation is really being driven by Washington spending. Let's get control over spending. Uh, let, let Speaker McCarthy and Joe Biden sit at a table and negotiate. Even Democrats are finally starting to say that the president needs to sit down with Speaker McCarthy and negotiate. You're going to see the House take the lead this week and pass a bill to address both the spending and the debt problem. And then let's see the Senate finally take some action. It's time for Chuck Schumer and the senators to do their job mm -hmm. and for Joe Biden to stop trying to run the clock out and create a crisis. Steve Scalise. Leader Steve Scalise. Thank you so much, Congressman. Great to see you always.